much, who knows how much honey it takes to make a pound of wax, roughly. It takes about eight to 10 pounds of honey. And that, that's not saying you take 10 pounds of honey and it turns it into 10 pounds or a pound of wax. That's the energy that the bees need to take to make one pound of wax. So about 10 pounds of honey. So if you're crushing your wax and you're crushing three to five pounds of your wax every year, that's how many pounds of honey that you're not having your bees produce. 30 pounds if it's a small step. Now, if you do the same thing, if you take your frames out of your hive and you scrape all of that wax off of there, you've probably got between one and two pounds of, of wax per frame. Okay? So that's how much uh, honey per box that you're making the bees do again. Plus, it's really, really, really time consuming for them. And during your main honey flow, yeah, they'll build out. Uh, wax really fast, but then towards the end of the flow, what do they have to put in it? Not a whole lot, because they've used the bulk of that honey flow. So that's why we do, uh, at least one of the reasons we do things the way we do it, and I'm going to show you one of the main ways that I like to do it, the reason I like to do it, is we'll just cut those cappings off with a hot knife or a little cappings fork, whatever method you choose to do that with. You'll cut that top cappings layer off of both sides, put it in your extractor and spin it, and then the honey all comes out. Then you have intact cells still so that they can just go fill those right back up. So, did you guys bring any frames with you? Yeah. Did you bring my box? Good. Yes, if you wouldn't mind, because we have... Did you bring all box? No, yeah. no. <laughs> I brought nine frames. Oh, good. We have, like, so, a good. frame that we're going to do a cut comb. So I'm going to show you guys how to do cut comb real quick. Oh, yeah. And then we, we were going to just, for funsies, do a head-to-head -head competition and see who can uncap. Should we just do four? We can do three. How about, how about we do four? Because then that's fair. All right. Number one piece of equipment. Nice damp cloth. It'll save your life. It'll help you not go insane. All right. So we have a pretty simple setup here for cut comb. Okay. Now, the, the cut comb is the original tamper-proof seal, okay? Back in the day, and still today, if you go to the store and buy honey, who knows what you're getting? Because, you know, the FDA says, as long as you have this percent of actual honey, the rest can be whatever you want. So you could put agave nectar, corn syrup, water, don't ever put water in your honey again. Botulism is bad. Don't, don't want to mess with it. Um, so this was the original tamper-proof seal, like I said. So the bees have, have completely turned this into honey, and they've capped it. And this one, we have kind of a mix of the two. And this is actually a little bit easier to see on the back side. You can see that one side is a little darker. So this side's a little darker than this side. This side is what we call dry cap. And this side is what we call wet cap. There's absolutely no difference between the two in quality. But if you're going to be selling it, people, for whatever odd reason, like that dry cap look a little bit better. Okay? And the only difference is there's a tiny little layer of air between the honey and the, the wax capping. Right? And that's the only difference. Really. So right here, what you're seeing is the honey actually pressed up against that wax. So again, there's really no difference between the two. Because you want to put your pretty side down. Okay? So we're just going to put this side, because this I like this side, it looks good. We're just going to put this side down right here. And then we're going to take a little knife. We're just going to follow that top line. So we're just going to separate that right from the top, right from the sides. And you don't need a whole lot of pressure to do this either. Now you'll see me, I'm, I'm, I'm cleaning my knife, but I'm going to make sure that it's not wet. Because again, I don't want to use any moisture into this. I'm just making it so that that blade is going to be a little bit easier because once you start getting honey and wax built up on there, you see how nicely that passes through there? That's what you want. You want that to come through nice and clean, nice, thin, sharp knife. Okay? And now, usually, we'll have, um, they, they do make some, some comb cutters that are a, a perfect square. You have to buy special uh, hinge top containers for it. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of go, okay, that's going to fit maybe right there. Cut that one. You want to cut it just a little smaller than the size of the container. So this is six dollars, and you get however many are in there. About Twenty-five of them, and they're the eight-ounce container. So 
if you're going to be doing cut clones, a good way to do it. All right, so now, ideally, what you're going to do is you're going to separate these, and you're going to let them sit overnight. And the main reason we're going to do that is if you are selling this, you want that to be nice and pretty and intact. And all that honey that are in these cells here on the sides that we've opened up is going to drain off, and that's why we have this little bit of a, a over the cookie sheet, you've got this little, it's not a drying rack, whatever this is. But you can use these little drying racks. Is you'll take your nice, beautiful piece of comb, and you'll set it right in there like that. All right. And it's funny, whenever people buy honey, if they pick something up and it's sticky, they instantly don't like it and don't want to buy it anymore. It's like, you're buying honey. It's <laughs> free sample. All right, and that is what that is. If you guys want to pass this around, you're welcome to the room. Always it's not sticky. Yeah. I'm working on it. I've got this nice sticky rag up here that I'm, I'm just making it all the same sticky. So for people that buy this, um, the cut do you just eat it? Yeah. Like that? Oh, yeah. So I'm going to give you a demonstration. It's very important. Make sure you watch closely. So you make sure you get a piece about yay big, and it all depends on your form. <laughs> More often than not, you just pop it in and cut. Now, oh, I'll cut one of these up. You guys can each come up and have a piece. You can swallow the wax; it's totally fine. It won't hurt you. You can chew it up, spit it out; doesn't matter. I'm really happy right now. <laughs> you gotta try this. It's really good. Where is this from? Which island? Right there. Ooh. It was in Tula, and then we brought it out over here. And that's actually so. What we like to do is um, we'll just cut. If you have extra bottom boards and uh, top boards, that's great. But a lot of times, what you want to do, keep it simple. It's the kiss principle. Cut a piece of plywood that's the top, the size of your top and bottom, so you just have something to carry it with. And uh, then we take, she just brought that frame on the porch that you dropped off. So you have a piece of plywood on the top and bottom and a uh, toe strap, not a toe strap, a uh, tie down, a ratchet strap. So that way it's all ratcheted on there. And then you can just, well, I don't pick this up. <laughs> but um, and that way you can move them individually. And so you just want it on a, yeah, at least a few feet away from the hive. And you're gonna go through your hive. And this is a great time of year to go through and go down to the bottom and see how your hive is. See if you need to replace some frames in the bottom that are too old and the wax is too dark, that kind of thing. And so we just give it a good shake, you know, you pull them out of the hive and um, you just kind of give them, put their bees all on there, just shake them off, okay? If you have someone with a brush and your little bee brush, well, most of the time it's just, you know, like, okay, ladies, okay, we're gone. And then you walk it over to the other one. I the you walk it over your other box, the other person opens up the lid, pop it in, okay, and they close the lid and you go for the next one. You still get a few, you know, bees in there, but generally not many. Um, so then, taking the extract um, or strainer, we're just trying to get the, the bee's knees and the little pieces of wax out of the honey. The extra protein. Yeah. Okay. So this is just a filter from, this is from data? Yes, um, but 400 micron, they do sell 200, 400, 600. You don't need anything smaller than two. Yeah. If you really want to go very slow, small. 200 is right. So yeah. 400 is your favorite? From the liquid room, it's just fine. Yep. 600 is nice too, okay? So it's just kind of like a paint filter. Yeah. And we like this a lot better than the first year. I had to filter through cheesecloth, or I tied up on the front of the extractor a uh, little gallon paint filter, and that was just... If I kind of use my extractor as a settling tank almost, mm -hmm. so I don't have to wait as long. Um, so what I do is I'll take my bucket. I kind of went a little higher tech this year. Um, so these screw-on lids are wonderful for this. Um, so I'll basically just put this in here, stretch it over the top, and then I've got my strainer in place. And the problem is honey's heavy, so I'll take a bungee cord and strap it around here just to keep it, keep it in place. And then I'll just open my honey gate, 
never leave the room when you've done that, mm. by the way. That is, I've never done it personally, but I have a friend who did it. It was the most ridiculously <laughs> awful mess I've ever seen. They're, they're scooping up with, like, dust pans and stuff. Um, with your other filters, do you clean those up every time? Or these? I mean, they're really easy to clean. Yeah. But what we kind of do is, and it's kind of the same setup as his, usually we have this wire rack, but, you know, well, I let these go clean that up today a little bit. I do have another button, but we knew we were having a lot more. I can put this on the bottom there. And for me, I just kind of put some blocks if I know there's going to be a lot. And that does a good job with straining it off quite a bit. And you can kind of see some of the captains in his tanks. It strains quite a bit, and that way you don't have to strain as heavily. Yeah. So what I've done is I've, I've actually redesigned this. I didn't bring the other one in, but mm -hmm. these are bus tubs. That's all they are. The bottom one is intact. The top one I've cut out. It's going to take a little bit because it's stuck together. But the top one I've cut out, and you can see that little bit of mesh, that kind of yeah, cooking thing on it. Um, mm -hmm. But they've come out, the place I get them from, that restaurant supply place, has come out with a half tub. And so it's only this deep, and so you have more clearance up here, and it's awesome. So, because right now, I can only, you know, I can let it drain until it's about there. Mm -hmm. And then I have to pop this off, dump it into my bucket, strain it. This is your best friend in the world mm -hmm. for that, incidentally. It's a, it's a flexible food scraper to the, to the frame. Because again, we want to cause as little damage to these as we possibly can because we want to maintain the integrity of the cell, okay? So that our bees don't have to work really hard to build them back up, okay? Another reason why I prefer to do, um, to do this over a knife, if we're doing bulk honey, um, yes, a nice drawn out comb, it's like, five seconds. Like butter. Like butter. Okay. Because I can lift off just barely, you know, just the lid of it. And even if I have a very deep cell and it's drawn out mm. beyond my frame, that's okay. I'm going to leave it that much. I'm going to leave it as deep as a cell as possible. Because one, that's less honey than I now have in my capping, these, these, these capping these tank hours. that I have to strain out later. And uh, when you scratch, this is what some people do. And they take it and they just scratch like this. I'll go do this little corner. See how it's ripping the, the top of this yourself? And it gets all these tiny little pieces of wax. Guess where those are going to end up? In the bottom of your filter. <laughs> and then it takes a lot longer. So if you have these big chunky pieces, you can kind of see this is so pretty. Can you see how this is just perfect? You can see the individual pieces of the, the octagonal top of the cell. That's what we want to get. You know, you don't need to have big gouges of honey come out. So, mm, even though it's kind of fun. So, mm -hmm. what, we do. what we like to do, when you have it up here, this is a great time to clean up your frame. Okay? So, take your hive tool. We just got tub, board, screw. Okay, That's nice because I can put it around and get it all angled. And we're just going to want to clean up this extra wax off on the side. And if it's drawn out, this also helps when you're using a capping knife because then you're not have, using it's a little bit thicker wax. You can just cut right down and it's an easy, much easier angle. Okay? So we're going to clean this up. Just yeah, there's a little bit of goodies there. You so can grab it from the field. Okay. I'm just, uh, and then a, a junk um, right here. I'll have him show you the hot knife. But what I like to do, I'll kind of turn towards you guys. Start here. The upper, I'm right-handed, so that's why I do this with my right hand upper right shoulder. And I'm just going to go along and just lift it off. You know, as little as possible. Okay. And you can go completely across the frame, scrape it off. I did some guy's honey this week who um, I got for my birthday a refractometer. Anybody know what that is? Yep. So it measures more or less the water content of your honey. And each hive, oh, that smells good. Mm -hmm. I can smell the hate now. <laughs> each hive and each frame is going to be slightly different. This one's actually pretty easy. Can you see how it's kind of dripping 
but it's not liquid. It's not drooling and drizzling down. I had one that, as I tried to lift off the frames, it was like, ah, uh, uh, uh. sorry, real quick. But otherwise, see, this takes a little bit longer to do, but I'd rather take the time, not only for my bees, but since we do this as a business for customers, to do it to do it right and do it pretty so I'm not having to gouge because I used to use the hot knife a lot more and if it's not completely drawn out then you have to kind of come at an angle and cut it and cut more into the wax so I kind of like the you know more handmade art of doing this all right you ready yeah am I helping you put it in or no that, that's up to you I'm going to do this backwards so you guys can see it yeah all right ready go okay. go This is the other reason that Austin likes to do the nine frame. frame. Oh, this is a sizzle. Yeah, it does smell good. You guys like that? Mm -hmm. Nice smell. Mm -hmm. My husband works in Sandy, and so, well, not for too much longer, actually. So we, he's constantly picking up people's frames and their honey and dropping them off and delivering them kind of thing. And the car used to smell like, he's a paramedic firefighter, so it kind of used to smell like smoke and boys and stuff like that. And now the car just smells like honey. It's awesome. It smells like boys. So this, this frame is, is one that came out of a 10 frame hive. You can tell. Because it's a little mushed and it's not extracted. But this last one I saved for the ooh mm -hmm factor. <laughs> yep. Because that one is a little more convex. Yeah, I go like that. Just a reminder, don't do the ninth frame in your bird box. <laughs> yeah, that's not so good. <laughs> well, you'll get a frame, but not how you want it. <laughs> well, I, I had one of my, my students decide to do that, and I still correct it. <laughs> you can do it. Yeah, but it's it's not worth it. Like it afterwards. Not worth it. So, yeah. that again? If you decide to do the nine frame thing, don't do it in your brood box. Yeah. Um, yeah, that that's bad. Yeah, just in your oh, honey suit. Why is that? Oh, no. There you go. It's because there the brood. See the that honey knife. See how quick that's gone. Gone. That knife's a standard knife. The brood is a set knife. Uh, I, oh my fact, I, I recommend that. There's been nothing real new in this industry in a hundred years. Thanks, you can be a good There's some things that are good when you have to make sure they're right. That's what he squishes through there. You can be the opener. See it. That extractor, he just puts those frames in there. Can you make the extractors those big things? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. They're common, standard. You yeah. can get them in two frame, three frame, four frame, bigger. So anywhere from it could cost us thirty bucks to get a plastic one, okay. up to charge for like three hundred. Physics take over at this point. How many rotations per minute? Mine's two. Several. So I'm going about that fast. So you'll just kind of lean into it and it'll balance itself out and that kind of helps it spin a little more normally. And as the honey comes out, especially on your second side, 